Hello guys and welcome to another War Thunder flight model analysis. Today I will be reviewing the Forktail Devil herself, the P-38G. This is a relatively highly suggested aircraft and I found out that it's for good reason. I never really liked this aircraft very much but I never thought that it was so off. I, I always assumed that it, this aircraft was just an early P-38 so it, it wasn't very good, it wasn't very effective. But that is not the case at all. This aircraft is simply not performing up to standard. This is, in my opinion, this is the most underperforming plane that I have tested in the game so far. I think this way for a number of reasons, and I will get to those reasons right now. Alright, first up, as usual, we have the max speed test, and looking at this chart, you can see several different max speeds tested at several different altitudes, all at military power. And as we can see from the chart, Military power, aka 100% full throttle, is usually listed at around 44.7 inches of manifold pressure, at least at low altitudes, and that will be important later on, so make note of that. And the chart also goes into some specifics around the weight of the aircraft, showing the amount of fuel used, which I calculated was around 45 minutes, and also the amount of guns and the amount of ammo. And because the tested aircraft only had 250 cals, I calculated the amount of ammo would weigh as much as 250 cals, and I subtracted that from the amount of ammo that I would have already had to have spent. Alright, you can see that I'm starting out with only 15 cannon shells and as close to 45 minutes of gas as I could get. Alright, here I'm testing the top speed at 5,000 feet, and you can see it's around 330 miles per hour. And at 14,700 feet, you can see the top speed goes up to 358 miles per hour. At 22,600 feet, the speed goes up to 384 miles per hour. At 24,400 feet, the speed improves to 394 miles per hour. And at 30,000 feet, the speed drops off to 380 miles per hour. Alright, here's all the data I just showed you, graphed into a nice pretty little graph. And as you can see, the orange line is the real world performance, and the blue line is the in-game performance. And now you're starting to see why I'm saying this aircraft is so underperforming. And I actually think I may know a reason why. As you remember from that chart earlier, the manifold pressure should reach about 44.7 inches under military power at low altitudes. And I'm about to show you what it reaches in this game. Alright, here we are in the cockpit of the P-38. We're looking at the manifold pressure, and as we can see at military power, it only reaches about 32 inches. And even with WEP, it only gets up to about 34, if that much. Alright, moving on to the climb data, as you can see from this chart, there are speeds listed at certain altitudes, and those are the speeds that I'm going to be climbing at. And, yeah, I'm just going to measure how long it takes for me to do the same climbs that they did. And since I recently figured out that reference test flights don't work if the aircraft is in your lineup, I'm doing this from the tech tree. You can see I'm going with 45 minutes of fuel again, and again I'm going to be using the same amount of ammo as I did on the max speed test. And since the climbing is pretty boring, I'm just going to skip straight to the results for you guys. Alright, so there's the hard numbers of how the aircraft performs in relation to the real-world performance of the P-38. Alright, here you can see I graphed all those individual data points, and again, the aircraft is underperforming by a significant margin. And again, I believe it's due to the manifold pressure not being up to par. Alright, moving on to the roll performance. You can see marked by those two red dots, the optimal roll performance of a P-38 is at around 280 miles per hour indicated. And this is a graph from a P-38E because I cannot find one for the P-38G. However, I feel it's safe to assume that the roll performance, if anything, should be better in the P-38G, considering that pretty much the only changes between the two models were that the G had improved engines and a better radio and also settings for combat flaps added. Alright, first up I'm going to test the 0 to 60 degrees roll, or what I like to call the initial roll, and there's no real way for me to accurately judge this, so I'm just using the old Mark 1 eyeball and judging where I think 60 degrees is. Alright, the P-38E data is on the bottom, so as you can see the P-38G in-game rolls from 0 to 60 degrees worse than the P-38E. Alright, next up we had the 60 degrees to 60 degrees roll, which unlike the initial roll, which is notorious for being pretty bad on the P-38, this one we have a little bit of momentum, so we should have a higher average. 
Alright, as you can see, I was correct about the higher average degrees per second, and in this one, the P38G actually beats the P38E. Alright, next up I'm going to do something a little new. I'm going to uh, test the breakup speed of the P38, and compare that to what it may have been in real life. Alright, so the absolute breakup speed for the P38 is around 890 kph, or 553 miles per hour indicated, and this is with zero input on the controls whatsoever. Alright, so the red line speed was around 737 kph, or 458 miles per hour indicated, and this is where the aircraft becomes dangerous to pull out of a dive. And as you can see, this is why this is interesting, because that speed is around the same speed the aircraft in real life would have started to suffer from compressibility. It's almost as if the devs were actually trying to simulate compressibility by giving you a relatively low redline speed. I just find it a little interesting how the P-38 is the only aircraft that they seem to do this for, and the other aircrafts that highly suffered from compressibility issues like the F-109s don't have this. Alright, so last but not least, we have the stall test, and here I'm going to test the powerless loop, and if the aircraft is performing correctly, it should go into a spin, which it does. Here I'm going to keep the elevator pulled for a while, and uh, it should get worse. Again, as it does, it starts to go into a more violent spin. In order to pull out of this, I simply reverse rudder and pitch the nose down, pulling out of the stall instantly. P-38 is extremely easy to handle in a stall, as it was in real life. The plane is performing absolutely beautifully in regards to stalling. Alright, so next up we have the powered turn. I should eventually exceed my angle of attack and then go into a spin. And again, the P-38 responds like it should, goes into a spin, and again, it's extremely, exceedingly easy to pull out of, and this is just a beautiful plane to handle in the stall fight. Alright, that's just about all I have for you guys this episode, and in case you're wondering, all the data and charts and stuff that I usually have only in my video, I'm going to be posting to a blog spot that should be up sometime today. And uh, I will be doing that from now on out, and so every test I do, will you'll be able to refer to the data, not only just from my video, but you can just refer to my blog spot. And I will link that in the description as soon as it's up. So I will let you know, and I will see you in my next video.